Well, this week, my full written training log is up on Elite FTS, but uh, I don't have any videos I'm going to post because I'm really focused on a lot of coaching right now. So I thought, let's talk coaching, motivation in particular. So in the gym or in sports, there's a lot of leeway that the, the coach gets um, in not necessarily being able to motivate in the right way, and things still happen. And that's because in those environments, people want to be there. And so that, uh, that allows uh, a, that, a little bit of freedom there. But in my experience, I see a lot of people doing things wrong, or maybe not wrong, but it could be done better. And you have to reflect on my background. My background's been um, you know, in the corporate world, kind of working my way up through the ranks. And um, I would say over the last two dozen years, or, uh, I have managed probably close to a thousand people um, over the last two decades. And over the course of that time, you've got to think, you know, in the work environment, if there wasn't a paycheck, people probably wouldn't be there. So how do you do the same things where you have to challenge people to do things that they never thought were comfortable, to do things that make them uncomfortable, but they don't necessarily want to do, and how do you get them to accomplish those things and then get excited about it, and then go on to the next adventure, the next challenge. And that takes a lot of work to get to that, to not only manage effectively, because there's not a lot of really effective managers out there, um, but also then be able to take a whole company and be able to do, you know, turn that company around, do an entire cultural transformation, um, you know, on that. that. That takes a little bit of practice and, and skill. And, and how do you do that? Well, let's get back to the coaches in the sports of the gym. There's a lot of coaches that think they have a certain style. I'm this style coach. You know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to put up with flack. I'm the, I'm the tough football coach or, you know, they're the, the, the super positive coach, the cheerleader coach. And they treat everybody the same way. That's not right. Because everybody has different ways that they're motivated. And to be effective, you need to be able to recognize what each of those personality types are and then tailor who you are to them. So in my career, I've probably been a thousand different coaches, not one particular style. Of course, my style obviously rolls over everything. But so how do you recognize that? We're going to go more into depth on each of those different types of personalities. We're going to kind of group people together. We're going to break it down to the three distinct types of uh, individuals that you'll encounter uh, in the gym or on the field. And in the future, we'll break out, you know, really how do you work with each one of those. But um, you've got three types of people. So one is your person that is uh, really extrinsically motivated. They're, they want to set a record. They want to win this competition. They've got this number that they, you know, this is, those are the things that they go for. They grasp for those. And those are great. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's a great clientele to work with. Um, but you also have your people that, you know, they're, they want to avoid the spotlight. They want to avoid getting criticized. They want to avoid that criticism from the coach. And as long as they're going under the radar, you know, they're going to they're gonna be happy. And then the third type is your type that is there because they believe what they're doing is the right thing. They want to be a better person. Um, they're, they're not necessarily trying to hit some goals, but they believe that this is going to add value to their life. This is, this is what they should be doing. And so it's that type of person that we're going to spend a, maybe a little bit of time on today. But uh, with each of those styles, you've got to be a different coach. So you've got to know what turns them on and what shuts them down. And that's where I see people going wrong. So those things that you can take one of that person that's, uh, that's extrinsically motivated and you know, you can use some negative reinforcement. It's, it's not PR, you know, you know, in our PR world. Um, and I avoided a lot of that type of mentality in, in my work environment, but I've done more of that with the coaching environment. Um, but I'll take it, for example, my friend, uh, my good friend, Adrian Larson. I can tell Adrian, there's no way you can ever make 220 pounds. You're just not tough enough. You're not man enough. And there's no way you can bench that much when you get there. Well, Guess what? He that's going to light a fire under his ass, and he's going to and he's actually going to do it to prove me wrong. 
And um, so that type, of, that, that type of motivation can work with those types of individuals. Um, and we'll, we'll dive more into depth on that in the, in the future. Your, you've got your other type of individual who is the, let's say, it's the, the person that is there for, they want to be a better person for the right reason. You know, it's not necessarily to win big things or do anything like that. Um, they want feedback. They are not necessarily want to, you know, fly under the, ra fly under the radar. But you have to be, you have to understand what type of feedback they need. So that person, if you try that, you know, that hard style that, you know, that uh, we've referred to the football coach where, you know, the only thing, the only time that, uh, that emotion is displayed is with, with anger. The only time where here's the correction, here's what you need to fix. Here's that, you know, that, that style, which works again for a certain subset, but for this group, you need to recognize it because what will happen is if you try that, they're, they may not even know that they're doing it, but they'll, they'll withdraw. They'll, you know, and the next thing you know, you know, a month down the road, they're going to be exiting the, you know, your, your gym, your team, whatever it may, whatever it may be, um, because they need some positive reinforcement. And we're going to get into the positive reinforcement much later because, again, this is an area that people do people that are really those, those, those pot of positive cheerleading coaches can do it the wrong way because it doesn't come across as authentic. The person doesn't buy it or, uh, again, it's, there's a lot of things with how you do it so that people actually recognize that you are saying something positive is very specific and they're actually grasping it too because, again, a lot of ways they say, hey, good job. People don't even hear that. So there's ways that you go about doing that. Um, but you need to you need to be authentic with it. So you know you need to be very specific uh, and grasp that person and say, "Hey, you've done a really good job on this." And that's the type of feedback that they need. Some of that doesn't need to be all the time. We don't want to be cheerleader coach where people don't buy your message because you know you're that. And then you can feed into, "Okay, here's some things that we can do as we work towards the future." To get better, um, but uh, you 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 need to make sure that you are not chasing those people away because if you're living in just this style of coaching, you're alienating a bunch of people, and it is your job, your job, not to be, you know, hey, this coach, your job is to help these people and to help them get better and accomplish things that they never thought possible. That's what your job is. And so to do your job, you need to be flexible. You need to be a different person for every person that you work with. And this is really important. Again, there's a little bit of leeway in our environment because people are coming and want to be there regardless of uh, you know, not getting a paycheck or something like that. So, but these are skills that need practice. And we're gonna dive into each one of these a little bit further into, in, in future discussions. So this is what I'm leaving you with this week our little piece on how to be the coach that can motivate people. If you enjoy the content and want to support the production of further content and also look like a badass, I suggest you go to uh, kabukiwarrior.com and check out these nice whiskey and deadlift t-shirts. Additionally, we've got a number of products and new products that we're releasing that will help you perform better and move better from coaching products products like the shoulder rock. So please check out kabukiwarrior.com.